What's up, guys? It's your friendly neighborhood Smango from FullTechPodcast.com. And today we are talking about the best Linux distributions for beginners going into 2023. It's now the end of 2022, just about. We're almost heading into December. Think about that. And some people still want to learn Linux, and there are going to be lots of beginners wanting to learn Linux for a long time. Um, so one of the biggest questions is, is like, what distro do I choose? And this can be a very open-ended question, let me just tell you. Very, very open-ended. It's really, really up to you. Really, ultimately up to you which version you want to learn. Um, there's benefits to learning all of them. But you do kind of want to, whenever you start getting into the IT field, you do kind of want to choose a path, sort of. And each distro kind of offers different things. Uh, like, but, but we'll get more into that in some maybe later videos or maybe a podcast or something. Uh, in this video, we're just going to cover the best beginner distributions, I think. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. Number one, Rocky Linux. I might have already had this pulled up on screen here, but Rocky Linux is almost perfect for the newbie and really the server admin. If you're going on the server admin route, it's probably best just to stick with like a server OS or enterprise. Now this used to be CentOS or CentOS, uh, but the reason you want to learn Rocky in this flavor is cause you'll be working with a lot of it. And it's cause of this big name right here, Red Hat Linux. Red Hat has been a staple in the Linux community for, I don't know, since I've known Linux even existed. So, I mean, with a name like that, you know, the, the, what Rocky does now is it's, it, it does what CentOS used to do. It used to be uh, just a free, quote unquote free version of Red Hat that the community developed and you get like an enterprise based system. Um, you know, it has lots of support. It's just, it's just great. It, it's a great operating system. It really is. Um, it does anything you want it to do. I recommend it. You know, I mean, just look at production ready. This is great just to start out with. And you could, you can do anything with this Linux version, this flavor of Linux. You do anything with it. Easy migration, community supported. I mean, it's got every, anything and everything that anybody would ever want when you're learning Linux. Uh, and you could and you could go right from learning this all the way if you wanted to get Red Hat certified. So it has all kinds of perks. Going on to the next one, which might be even more simple for you, and that's Ubuntu. Um, you know, it's by the, the company Canical, which is trying to compete with Red Hat. So uh, it's another great flavor of Linux, and it's based on Debian. Uh, but it's great. It's supported everywhere. Like, if anything has more guides and stuff out there than Ubuntu, I don't know what it would be because Ubuntu is literally everywhere. Um, I mean, it, it's, I don't know if it has the biggest market share, but it definitely has the most friendly guides for anybody learning Linux. And so, I mean, you can do the server, you can do the desktop flavor, you can try it out on, you know, a, just a live CD. You can do, I mean, pretty much every Linux has a live CD now, so, uh, I mean, it, it installs on anything, <laughs> Raspberry Pi even. So, I mean, it's just a great, great Linux distribution to learn. And, if I mean, if you learn this, you kind of know them all, sort of. And I mean, Ubuntu is just a big, big name. It's great. It's easy. I highly recommend it as well. All right. So the next one is Manjaro. Manjaro is actually really great. And it's become one of my more favorite ones to put on like a, a, a laptop. Like you can see here, there's a laptop. It is extremely good. Um, 
Manjaro is sort of Arch, and Arch is hard to install because you have to do everything manually. Like, you have to install uh, Arch. You have to make your own partitions. You have to know make your own file system. You have to make, you know, have the right drivers installed. You have to pick your right driver. You have to install the network driver. You have to do everything. Manjaro takes all the awesome things. It makes Arch Linux kind of awesome and just makes it easy. Uh, I mean, it's easy to install. And it comes with the you know Pac-Man. It even comes with the Pac-Man package manager, which is can get you a little familiar with Arch if you ever want to try to go that route eventually. But I wouldn't recommend Manjaro if you're wanting to do server stuff. That's just me. If I think if you're doing server stuff, you should still stay stay stick with Rocky and Ubuntu. But if you want an everyday driver that's solid as a rock and just looks great it feels great i mean i i like just the normal install of manjaro and without changing anything it's probably the easiest right out of the box is probably the greatest looking distro out there it just looks good it, it's very familiar to windows and i just think it's a great great distro i think it really goes really well on old old laptops or even new ones if you want to put it on a new one that'd be good too but yeah really really good distro wouldn't recommend it for servers but i mean you can run a server on it but i would rather stick with uh rocky or ubuntu on to the next one we've got elementary os uh i'm not a huge fan of this but uh have Revived a lot of laptops with it, old old dying laptops. Uh, it has that. It comes pretty pretty much. I hate saying pretty much, but you can install this the the Mac OS look on almost any distribution out there. You, you know Docker, um, but this comes with that Mac OS look pre package pre installed working great. So it's kind of hard to go past that. I mean, you don't have to do anything special. It already kind of looks like Mac. If you like a Mac look and you want to try something different, this might be up your alley. Putting it up there really for the Mac OS people. Uh, I mean, it does everything else the other Linuxes do. I still wouldn't do it as a server, but putting it on an old laptop, it's great. On to the last one. Uh, putting it on here for the hardcore Windows lovers out there that just cannot get enough Windows, but they love they. I mean, they absolutely love the look of Windows. They can't get away from it. This one was literally made for you. It's called Linux FX. It, I mean, it's it's literally went it like Windows Eleven, even it looks like Windows Eleven to the naked eye. You would not be able to tell the difference. Especially at first. You would not be able to tell the difference at all whenever you boot this up. It looks just like a um, Windows 11 install. Like if you, and you can even get the login screen to look just like it and everything. But um, not my favorite. I wouldn't really recommend it to use every day as I heard it has some kind of spying kind of like Windows does. So if you're one of those guys, but if you don't really care and you like the look of Windows and you want something very familiar this is it this is the most familiar you'll ever get and they even have on their website that it supports android applications and even i mean everything just kind of works like if you want to install android stuff and office this works fairly well i mean you could you could really trick people if you install this in a uh, corporate environment <laughs> because you can you know all kinds of things. Going, I ain't gonna try to get too much of that, but uh, you could really, you could really set this up, and you could log in like a Active Directory user on this, and most likely a, a normal user would not be able to tell that they was using a different operating system, which is kind of scary, but it's kind of cool too in a way. All right, so we're going to end that with a few honorable mentions and i'd like to honorable mention um 
you know, Zoran OS, that's a pretty good one. It's very familiar to Windows as well. Linux Mint, that's a very popular one. I don't like it as much as uh, Rocky or Ubuntu, but some people love Linux Mint. And of course, you can just get the Raspberry Pi OS, and that's based on Debian. And I mean, it made to work right on a Raspberry Pi for $35. I mean, what do you got to lose there? Um, I highly recommend getting your own computer or laptop, even an old one. Just get something you don't care to mess around with or destroy or lose information on. Get that installed and get the using Linux. But guys, that's it for this video. We'll see you guys next time. Let me know what your favorite Linux distributions are down below. If I missed one, if you think I got it completely wrong, let me know. Drop a comment. Be sure to check out fulltechpodcast.com. Follow me over on Twitter at thesmango. We'll see you guys next time.